Hello, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome. Use the chat and let us know where you're tuning in from. Cheryl's in Savannah, Julia's in upstate New York. I'm in Seattle. Where are you? And if you watch these, you will know that this is my fa one of my favorite parts of doing these. <laughs> New York City, hello. Savannah, hello. St. Petersburg, St. Petersburg, Florida, DC, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're gonna let a few more people get tuned in and we'll get started. Hudson Valley, hello. Oh, that's Julia, hi. <laughs> from Charlotte. Oh, fabulous. Everett, Washington. All right. Seattle people, where are you? All right, we're leveling off a little. Dallas, Texas, hello. Brooklyn, New York. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started then. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, this afternoon, wherever you are. Um, I'm Lara Hamilton. I have a cookbook shop here in Seattle called Book Larder. We do a lot of author talks and cooking classes in our shop and have just started to do those in person very slowly uh, as we work our way through this pandemic. But for the time being, we are still here on Zoom. And it really opens up great opportunities for us to have conversations like the one that we're having this evening where I'm here in Seattle, Julia, who's doing the interviews in New York and Cheryl's in Savannah. Um, when, when else could the three of us really get together like this? And it means that you guys, you all can join us from all over the country. So thank you so much for being here. We are of course here to talk about Cheryl Day's fantastic forthcoming book, Cheryl Day's Treasury of Southern Baking. She is, of course, the founder and baker at Back in the Day Bakery in Savannah, Georgia, and she is going to be in conversation with podcaster and food writer Julia Tertian, whose most recent book is called Simply Julia. The two of them are going to talk about the book. They will leave time for questions, so please use that little Q&A button at the bottom of your screen if you have questions for Cheryl and Julia. We are also recording this conversation, and so if you have to jump off early or you want to share it with others later, it'll be on our YouTube channel in the next couple of days, and everyone who is registered will be sent a link to that as soon as it's live. And you can support the talk, of course, by deciding to purchase this uh, lovely book from Book Larder. It comes out on November 9th, and we will send that out to you um, a couple of days before, so hopefully you'll get it in time for release day. And I will put a link to ordering in the chat in just a few minutes so uh, to make that easy for you. All right. I am now going to turn things over, so please join me in welcoming Cheryl Day and Julia Tertian. Hi. We Hi. revealed ourselves. <laughs> I feel like we just came back, came out from behind the curtain. I know. Cheryl, it is so good to be here with you. I am so excited oh to be gosh. here with you. And I think, I hope I can speak. Hugs. Hugs. Big, big hugs. Um, I think safe to say I can speak on both of our behalves to thank Book Larder. Yes. And Laura. Um, and I have thought this before I've said it before I'll say it again I just book larder is one of my favorite places in the world and I'm so grateful for everything the store does for cookbook authors like you and myself and I am just so grateful also to all these wonderful people who have shown up voluntarily on zoom in the year 2021 I'm so <laughs> and excited and I, I hope people it's amazing. Will continue to support if they have already purchased my book buy your book buy a book <laughs> we, we my book yeah we know some good ones um but we are here tonight Laura said it I'm gonna show my copy we are here for this book this really really amazing book um this book will be available in a few weeks so tonight is all about um, celebrating what's about to land in people's kitchens and people's homes. And I love this book. I have seen parts of this book 
at different points during the making of it, but to hold the book, to have it here in my home. I'm so lucky to have this early copy. This is really, this book is like a big deal. Um, and enough awesome. about how I feel holding it. How do you feel holding a copy of this? Oh, I feel um, honored to be telling this story. Mm. I make it a little emotional. It's You're a, in a safe place here. <laughs> it's a big story to tell. It's a bold Um, I make a lot of bold statements in the book and I am just, I feel really seen. I feel, I don't know. I just feel really honored to be able to share uh, the history of, Mm -hmm. uh, of baking, Mm -hmm. uh, Southern baking and through the eyes of my personal story, as well as, as telling the story of, you know, the folks that created it, the black Mm -hmm. folks created this book. Mm -hmm. I I feel very, yeah, I felt very honored to be the one to, to lend my voice and to share the story. Yeah. I, I sense that from the writing, from just hearing you talk about making this book, it's, it's such a personal book and it's also not personal. It's, it's historical. And I, I feel like you have done such a great job of making the historical personal, the historical present. Yeah you know, these things that are easier, I think, said than done. Um, so there's, there was something that stood out to me in the introduction, the introduction. I'm just so excited for everyone to get this book and to just read this and sit with it. It's, it's, it's just so good. Okay. Anyway, in the introduction, there's a part where you talk about, um, feeling like your arrival was cause for celebration when you got to your grandmother's, um, there would be all this food, all this baking happening. And then you realized it was just like that every day. (laughs) It wasn't about you showing up. (laughs) And I, (laughs) I just, I got such a like giggle out of that, but also I was just thinking about this feeling of like everyday celebration and Mm -hmm. just like appreciation for what you have and what you can make and stuff. And to me, that comes through not only in this book, but also in your bakery. And I just thought maybe just for a little bit of context, because I know people don't have the book yet. They're about to get it because they're definitely right. going to pre-order it. If they haven't already, we'll talk about all that because it's just really, that is the thing to do. Um, but could you maybe just give folks who are here with us tonight, just a little context about um what you've been doing for the last few decades and where this book comes from? (laughs) Yeah. Um, I, at back in the day bakery, I decided to Griffin and I, my husband decided to open up in a underserved neighborhood in Savannah, um, because we really, um, saw the potential and we are dreamers, I guess. And I just really, our goal or my personal goal was to create a sense of pride for the folks that live in my neighborhood and to let them see that, you know, I'm a black woman, I own the bakery, they can come to this place, it's approachable, it's inclusive of everyone. And I wanted to create a gathering place. I wanted to, you know, create a place that would be a sense of pride and legacy Mm -hmm. for the neighborhood that had just really, um, you know, people had lost hope in the neighborhood Mm. and I still saw hope. And so, yeah, fast forward 20 years later, it's, I mean, you've been there. It's, you know, um, it turned into this huge gathering place. I think that's been the hardest thing for us during COVID is Mm -hmm. because we we did lose that, but we fe- we have found other ways to kind of create a sense of community. And so that's what I've been doing. And then also a big part of my work is besides creating legacy for myself, um, because I'm getting to the age where I, I'm thinking about that, but I also <laughs> with um, two other friends um, started uh, Southern restaurants for racial justice, where we have been able to give grants to other black owned businesses, uh, restaurants in particular, and so that they could kind of create legacy and generational wealth in mm-hmm. 
neighborhoods all over the country. So yeah. that's what I've been doing. And because- I write books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you are busy. I was telling Cheryl before we just um before the Zoom started, I I've been having this funny chapter of my life. I've been working at a vegetable farm for a season and during the summer when we would start very early in the morning to avoid like the worst heat and I was waking up at like 5 in the morning. I told you this, Cheryl, but I just kept saying to my wife, Grace, like Cheryl Day has been awake for so many <laughs> hours. And just yeah. to reassure everyone, I already checked. Cheryl does not have to get up at 3 a.m. or 2 a.m. tomorrow. You can yeah, get some I rest because we're on East Coast time. Um, <laughs> but anyway, back to legacy, which you just brought up, um, the work you're doing right now, like actively creating legacy is such amazing, important work that the way you engage in it is just very, I think, inspiring for all of us to hear about. And I want to talk a little bit more about not only the legacy you're creating for yourself and you're helping other people create, but the legacy you come from. And that is so much of what this book is, and it's paying homage to that legacy and especially to the women um, in your family and in your community who who paved the way. And you uh, wrote in the book um, that history is written by the, the victors. And in terms of talking about legacy, I just, I wanted to talk about print and like the written word and how Mm -hmm. that kind of works into legacy. Cause I think so many of us know and love you as the baker you are, as the business owner you are, Cheryl from back in the day bakery. And so many of us also know and love you for your your books. And I wanna talk to you, Cheryl, the writer, (laughs) to find out what does it mean for you with all of this in mind, legacy, especially, what does it mean for you to be an author? Is that like a word you use to present yourself if someone asks you what you do? That is something I am working on presenting myself (laughs) as an author because I am by trade a baker. Um, I don't Mm. consider myself a pastry chef. I'm definitely a baker. And, but I am getting into the role of being an author because it's something that I really enjoy. And um, with the encouragement of, you know, all of the great folks that have surrounded me, um, I definitely feel that I have, you know, I have, I'm owning that now because Mm. I enjoy it so much. And I, I really love telling stories and it's something that's kind of, I believe in my DNA as well as baking Mm -hmm. and yeah. So yeah, I'm an author now. (laughs) I mean, and you have been for a while. You're also, I, I feel like I've said this to you and if I haven't, it's overdue. I mean, you you are an amazing writer. Oh, like, your you. skill as a writer. Obviously, you know that means so much because I've I've given you things to like. Can you read this and see if it sounds like right, good, or <laughs> well, it's, it's that imposter not, syndrome, you know. Yeah. That, so a lot. Of I mean, stuff. that's a real thing. I mean, yeah. I have been honored to be on the other side of those emails and to get like sneak peeks of things like you know parts of this book and. There is a line, you sent me your introduction Mm. a while ago to take a look at, and there was a line that stood out to me then Mm -hmm. um, that I wrote back to you. And (laughs) I was looking at it this morning in the book Mm -hmm. and I was just thinking, it's just such a, it's incredible. And you said, because of my mother's courage to leave the South, I had the opportunity to return. Yeah. And that is such a simple sentence. <laughs> I'm like doing like writer nerd geeking out right now, but it's, it's such a simple sentence and it, but it's so profound because of my mother's courage to leave the South. I had the opportunity to return like every word in that sentence needs to be there <laughs> and you pick the right yeah. words. And I've been thinking so much about the strength of both your writing and your baking to me is in your fearlessness about sticking to simple things. It's true. (laughs) You know, like, (laughs) like you just said, you don't identify as a pastry chef. Like you talk about like, you're someone who makes biscuits and that's powerful. And so what is the role of like restraint 
in your life. Do you, mm-hmm. are you someone when it comes to writing and baking, like, is it very flowery and you take things away? Like, are you an editor or does it come naturally to you to be like simple, but profound? <laughs> like, how does that happen? How does the like powerful simplicity happen? Well, we should probably ask Judy Bray. <laughs> <laughs> who is, who is your very amazing editor. <laughs> but um, I mean, I think like that particular sentence I definitely remember feeling very profound about writing it Mm -hmm. and knowing that it was very simple but I think sometimes I definitely um have to take things away Mm. um when I'm writing Mm -hmm. but every you know sometimes I just can say something exactly how I want to say it and and that's you know that's a process I think Mm -hmm. of, of learning how to you know, become, becoming a writer, I guess. Mm-hmm. What about with baking? Does it? Uh, with baking, I'm definitely all about the ingredients. <laughs> I always have been very simple. Mm-hmm. Um, I believe in letting the simple ingredients shine. Mm-hmm. Um, something that I do really love to do is play around. And I did this a lot during the pandemic, play around with savory or what people think of as savory spices and botanicals Mm -hmm. and adding those I like to kind of think of myself as an intuitive baker I don't just make like um you know I'll add coriander to a recipe or Mm -hmm. or turmeric or I just like to really play around with um botanicals and spices and things like that but generally I'm pretty simple when it comes to I don't like and I guess that's why I'm more of a baker I don't know I don't like a lot of if I was doing a plated dessert, I mean, I did actually, I, I felt so out of place at the James Beard house mm-hmm. I did banana pudding. And, you know, I felt like I needed to put things, components on the plate. And um, I did it with Carla Hall, my friend. Mm-hmm. And she said, no, that's not why you're here. Are you doing mm-hmm. Cheryl Day? <laughs> and, you know, Cheryl Day is just very simple. Um, the ingredients, you know, I'll I'll put maybe some edible flowers or something like that, but I just don't like a lot of uh, extra Mm -hmm. components on the plate. Yeah. I, I really identify with that and I admire how you do that. And what a great reminder Carla offered you in that moment that like, you're not here to be someone, right. That's not you. Like you're here because you make the well, best banana that's pudding not what I do I don't do yeah. plated desserts everybody was doing their you know little plated desserts and I was just like that's my plated dessert <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I can imagine which dessert people were probably most excited to eat <laughs> or I know I would have been <laughs> yeah, really sure. I've had that banana pud- that banana pudding is yeah. I mean it is so good it's so good <laughs> Do you, I mean, you mentioned before when we were talking about like being a writer and author, you mentioned imposter syndrome. Um, I'm sure people listening to us today, many people can identify with that and relate like in their own life. I mean, it's so uh, common. Uh And with your ability to like really, you know, to serve your extraordinary banana pudding as it is, at, you know, in the context, like the James Beard house, which Mm. for lots of cooks and chefs is like, that's like a big deal to be invited to cook there. Like, do you, I guess, how do you deal with imposter syndrome? Do you like in those moments, is there something you tell yourself that you remind yourself, like putting out your book and, you know, hearing people introduce you and be like, you know, New York Times bestselling author, Cheryl Day, like, do you, do you feel confident in those moments? Do you feel nervous? Like, how do you deal? How do you deal? Oh, I do. How do you get through life, Cheryl? Tell us. Uh, yeah, how do I get through? I know I definitely feel um, a little vulnerable and a little mm-hmm. out of place. You know, mm-hmm. I definitely struggle with that a little bit still. Um, I said, I was telling, um, my good friend Haley I said if I ever like won an award for something there would be like a means of me of like (laughs) you know ugly crying and just like I don't even know I I just I don't know it's just still very unexpected but 
yeah, there's been a lot of ugly crying because I definitely have been getting some really great feedback mm -hmm. on the book. Um, someone uh, wrote a uh, review on Bon Appetit this week and I was ugly crying because mm. it was, um, they said, and they said it was their first review they had ever done. And um, it was just so beautifully written. And they said all of the things that I would have wanted them to mm. get out of, you know, the book. And, you know, they said that it was just, you know, the book that they had always wanted to mm. have. And that's why I wrote the book, because I never saw a book like this on the shelf written mm -hmm. by a person that looks like me. Yeah. Yeah. That is really powerful. And I'm so glad you had that like reflected back to you in that review. Mm -hmm. Like what a powerful experience. Yeah. The book that this reviewer, you know, wish she had the book that you created, the book I'm holding right, right. next to me. Um, I, I just, I am so lucky that I have this copy here. <laughs> I'm just remembering that everyone listening doesn't have theirs yet. So why, what about this book makes it the book that you felt you needed to write? I mean, you've written, you along with your right. husband, Griff, wonderful Griff, who we all adore. We're sending Griff a big hug. You and Griff have written other books. You've written wonderful books. I made the buttermilk um, uh, buns from, I can't oh. remember which, so the first or second book. I made them the other week. Yeah. I was like, these are so good. They're yeah. so good. I, I mean, those books are so good. They have so many wonderful recipes, mostly recipes from the bakery. They're really like tried and true great books. So what about this book? Let me hold yeah. it up again. So everyone can see your beautiful portrait on the cover. Um, what about this made you feel like I need to commit to this and do this? Cause this is a substantial book. Why, like what's well, in it that was missing? This book, I knew I wanted it to be, you know, Judy kept telling me we want a wider lens mm -hmm. and it started out actually not being as personal, but kind of came back around as being more personal because mm -hmm. I guess, you know, I, it just always does, but mm -hmm. um, I wanted it to be something that would resonate with, um, you know, like that person that wrote the um, review mm -hmm. and, you know, they said that they grew up in the South and could, you know, relate to so many of the stories mm -hmm. and the food the fact that I have, you know, four biscuit recipes and multiple recipes of cornbread. I wanted it to be not just my story, although mm -hmm. it is very personal. I wanted to have some historical context. I, I mean, I had so many recipes and people would in the community would just drop off books on my doorstep of, you know, like church cookbooks. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a big undertaking to think about who, you know, is going to read it. I just wanted it to be comprehensive. If someone is interested in Southern baking, if someone has roots in the South, I just wanted there to be something that would resonate with all types of, you know, folks. And mm -hmm. I just thought, yeah, I just wanted it to be inclusive of yeah. all sorts of folks. But most importantly, I wanted to make sure that I paid homage to the creators of the food, <laughs> which yeah. I am baffled that I'm kind of, you know, some of the statements that I make are very bold. In fact, you know, like in the beginning of the introduction where I say this book wouldn't be possible, you know, without the millions of enslaved Americans mm -hmm. that came before me. We can't talk about sugar. We can't talk mm -hmm. about you know, being in the South and I just don't know how you can, um, you know, tiptoe over things and, and not be very clear about mm -hmm. what happened and yeah. what's happening. So. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I think for all of those reasons, you know, it is so, it's not just wonderful that this book exists. It's important that it exists and that you. you were the one to write it. Um, and 
I, I'm struck by you saying that w- what you just said is like a bold thing to say because I mean, I, I agree. And I also don't agree because is it bold to just tell the truth? <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know, but it feels, <laughs> but to you, it feels, you feel like it's a bold statement. I do. I yeah. mean, I, I'm not going to lie. It makes me a little vulnerable because yeah, I, sure. know, I know how people are, you know, let's just be honest. Mm-hmm. And, um, but I'm ready. Yeah. <laughs> You know, this was just really important for these things to be said. And Mm -hmm. I just, yeah, yeah, I'm, I just feel honored that I'm the person that's able to say them. Yeah. And it's important. I think it's important for all of us as, you know, whether we are, you know, Americans (laughs) tuning in tonight, whether we are just home bakers who enjoy Southern baking, whether we're people who just enjoy the cookbooks and want to understand the system in which they're made, you know, all these different reasons, many of us are here tonight and we're here for you tonight. And I think, you know, it's important that we know all of these things and all of this history and where the roots of Southern baking Mm. really are, you know, buried. And it's also important that we pay attention to who, whose version of the story we're listening to. And, uh, and the recipes are fantastic. Yes, yes. I want to talk about the recipes, but, and I have very specific questions about the recipes, but I also just want to talk about what we're talking about right now. There was another line I wrote down. I have this, like, I have a million post-it notes here. I have this old envelope. I'm um, like, do you know how many notebooks I own? And I just don't use them. It's crazy. I anyway. <laughs> I'm like, get me a scrap I of paper. Use that. <laughs> What I, I'll save that for my therapist. I don't understand. Um, okay. So you wrote a, another line that I love so much, which is how many Southern grandmothers are there? That is perhaps how many ways there are to make a biscuit. <laughs> what yeah. is it? Yeah, so great. So with that in mind, you also shared there's, you know, what four different biscuit recipes in the book. Right. I'm, I'm thinking about this, about like, the role of Southern grandmothers about the role of all of the unnamed right. cooks and bakers, especially black women throughout the history of the American South who have created all the recipes that we associate with the American South. There's so many versions of things, right. so many variables and this Some book, sugar and cornbread. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a big controversy. And so many opinions about all of this. Yeah. And so my question for you, before we talk about specific recipes is how do you know when a recipe is ready? <laughs> hmm. I mean, I, well, let's see, what should we talk about? Well, want to like, pick a recipe? Yeah. Like chocolate cake. Uh-huh. You know, I know you have a great chocolate cake recipe. You know, you knew that was Grace's cake. I mean, <laughs> it's like, you're just looking for the quintessential perfect, you know, chocolate cake. Mm-hmm. I had in my head biscuits, a, one particular biscuit, the, the flaky butter, butter biscuits. I wanted those to be, um, you know, kind of like, a, a from scratch version of the kind that you crack in the can, mm-hmm. you know, all the layers pop. So that pop. So that was one recipe. There are some recipes that, you know, are a little bit more difficult to get mm-hmm. to where you, you know, you want, like there's a sweet potato cookie and that cookie, I like, I knew I wanted it to have a certain texture. And I mean, I did have to do it over and over and over many times until I felt like it was, you know, the right texture. Mm-hmm. I just, you know, that's one thing that I do feel confident about mm-hmm. is being able to trust my palate when it comes to what's good. I think over the last 20 years running the bakery, that's a skill that I've picked up is that I feel like I have, a, I'm able to sense what people crave. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something that I pride myself on because every day I have to put food in the case 
you know, it's not like a restaurant model. You have, they come in and they look and they choose from the case. And so I, I just kind of have come up with this way of figuring out what people crave and generally <laughs> speaking I like to think of it around the seasons which is very much you know how my grandmother would have done it mm -hmm. but also it's a very you know southern california thing I grew up in southern california and so it's like this juxtaposition of just you know making food with the seasons things mm -hmm. that grow together um you know, just that's kind of a historic thing that, you know, farmers would do. They would make things that grow together. So mm -hmm. that's a sense that I feel confident about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, you really, you said it best, like you really are very good at predicting what people want. And I think you're also just really good at predicting things we don't even know we want, <laughs> but we see it in your case at the bakery, or we see the recipe in your book, and we're like, "Oh my gosh, I have to have that." It's so funny. One of my oldest friends, Julia, um, my friend Karen, we met on the first day of high school. That was for over forty years ago, but and we're still friends. She's just like one of my biggest cheerleaders, and she has always said that. I, she was telling her teenage daughter this story. Actually, she had her 60th birthday party here in Savannah mm. and um, her, her teenage daughter came and her daughter was saying something to me about um, a concert that she was going to. And I said, oh, what concert? And she said who it was. Um, and I was like, oh, I know who that is. And she was like, really? And so Karen said, oh yeah, she's my cool friend. And let me tell you, <laughs> When we were in high school, she discovered Prince <laughs> and she's always Amazing. Been like ahead of, I've, been, I've always been able to pick kind of what was going to be yeah. next or cool. So, yeah. yeah. And I feel like you're also, you're so good at like everything in the bakery and even like what you're wearing today, your, your eyeglasses, like oh. you have such a love of like of older stuff and vintage. And hmm. I feel like knowing that sometimes the coolest thing is something that's been around, you know, yeah, it's, for sure. it's like a perfect biscuit. Yeah. Um, I love that description of you just because you brought up music. I wasn't planning <laughs> to go here, but maybe you could tell us all just a little, just a Cheryl day, fun fact sidebar to this conversation about your book would you like to share anything about soul train <laughs> <laughs> well we can't have an interview without this coming up okay it just would not be official um yeah so i used to when i was a teenager i danced on soul train for many years like all like one of my favorite facts of yeah all like junior high school and a bit through high school but so we have and you probably i know i've shared this with you and i put it on instagram too but there's footage that has uh, come up when they were vetting me to be able to talk about this <laughs> soul train um, with me doing the scramble board with Don Cornelius. And I was so painfully shy that I, and I had forgotten how shy I used to be. Mm. I was like introverted, painfully shy. I never did the soul train line ever, ever, ever. And they scooped me up to do that, um, the scramble board so I couldn't hide from anyone. But the thing that I learned was during that time that kind of helped my personality um, nurture. And I started coming out of being so shy mm -hmm. because I don't know, I just, you know, like meeting people that were from all over the city of Los Angeles and, you know, not in my little neighborhood and, mm -hmm. and really kind of brought me to be this Cheryl day. <laughs> yeah. I love it. You know, it's so funny hearing you, you know, I've heard you talk about it before. I love knowing this part of, of your history. And I, I never thought about until tonight, like hearing about you being maybe more shy or introverted. And then like, you don't just go to like a school dance or something <laughs> like you went on yeah. soul train for, you yeah. know, for years. And, you know, you have been like uncovering this history of the lineage of your family and the connection between all the black women in your personal history and their connection to baking and to cooking. Mm -hmm. 
and you know you put it into a book like this like you don't you don't just know it and talk about it like you share things in this big way and it's really cool I feel like we are all just the beneficiaries of like your your vulnerability it's really amazing thank Um, you appreciate that Okay, before I start crying, um, let's talk about some actual recipes. <laughs> I said we were going to get there. Okay, so I, um, I'm i always really, I never know what to say when someone's like, what recipe should I make from the book? Because right. it's like, well, what do you like? <laughs> let's start there. You know. So what I like to do instead of just that big question is I'm going to give you some scenarios. Okay. And then you tell us first thing that comes to your head, no overthinking. I also feel like I should flip through these pages to like show people like this book is beautiful. The photography is beautiful. I don't yeah. know how well you can you see that. You shot it, Haley Waring styled it. And you had such a great team. Was like my ride or die baker. Look at you, look at you. <laughs> um, you guys shot it during COVID. I mean, we're still 17 in 17 days. Yeah, 17 days. Together women you did it you had yeah. like a dream team um and they you know we're talking about money. such <laughs> we're talking about such important things in this conversation tonight you know where this book fits into history and legacy and but also as you said there are such good recipes so okay i my first scenario is I just opened to the peach streusel muffin recipe. Oh my God, how good does that sound? I just opened randomly to this page. Look at these muffins, they look so good. Okay, let's say you have, this might be true for some people in certain parts of the country. Let's say you have a ton of peaches or maybe you have a ton of frozen peaches. Um, What do you do with all these peaches? What are you gonna do with them? Well, I would either make jam. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But uh, for baked goods, I love to make those muffins. Those mm-hmm. muffins. You could do a, um, I mean, there's so many things you could do. One of my favorite recipes that I feel, I hope it's not kind of like a sleeper recipe. It's very simple. It's the, um, and forgive me if I get the name wrong, but it's the uh, rice panna cotta. And I would love to forgive you if you get the name wrong. It's it's oh, well, no, I just, you know, exactly. (laughs) But it's the rice panna cotta that's okay. And um, toasted rice panna cotta. Yes, see, I missed the toasted part. But so that would be beautiful with we did pears on those courtney did some beautiful poached pears but like you know peaches would be great on that um i would pears. make so beautiful can you see this no, i just love it's so good and simple you know especially so like a hot savannah summer day oh mm-hmm. one of my favorites for peaches though is the um cornmeal peach cake mm. Yeah, that is in the grits and grains chapter. Mm. Um, And that is really, really good. Peaches freeze great. And I tell you something I've been doing lately, and of course, pie, the lattice peach pie. But I have been freezing, going ahead and processing the peaches. But lately, Julia, I have not been peeling them. Mm -hmm. And I've been using those. And I've even made pies and all sorts of things where normally like I'm the person that peels an apple. I cannot stand like my mom used to peel apples for me all the time, but I love, love. I know it is love. That is love. Yeah. Griff does it now, but anyhow, but um, more love. (laughs) I, they freeze great. You can put Mm -hmm. them like, you know, process them, put them in Ziploc bags and put them in the freezer. And then you can make any of those recipes with peaches. And by process them, you mean you are like so cutting even, them up, taking out the right. pit? Yes, exactly. Okay. Or leave the skin on. Leave the skin on. If you're a person that doesn't want skin, then I teach you how to make, you know, how to peel them. There's a mm-hmm. whole sidebar on how to do that. But 
I said, those skins, really, they just kind of melt away and it gives it nice textural. A nice color when you Yeah, bake. beautiful yeah. color. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So I'm beautiful. embracing the skin. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm gonna give you a more specific scenario, not just okay. like an ingredient. Um, I've been thinking so much about how baking helps us celebrate things. It helps us console, you know, it, it really runs the gamut. So in terms of like celebration, yeah. let's say a good friend of yours who you adore and admire is having a really amazing book get published. <laughs> you want to celebrate, you want to bring her a cake. You want to put candles in the cake. It's not a birthday, but it's like, let's just have this moment of joy. What is the first thing to come to your mind from this book? What signals like, congratulations, you did something Chocolate awesome. Chocolate church cake. Chocolate church cake. Yeah, for sure. Is there a picture of that? Can I find it? Is. it? And it's okay. got beautiful flowers on okay. it. Actually, Tell everyone about the cake and I'll find the picture. So it is a um, very chocolatey cake made with unsweetened chocolate. It actually is one of the old fashioned Southern recipes that has oil, sour cream, mm -hmm. um, you know, lots of eggs and it is super I, moist and delicious. I just want to let people know in the index, all of that is under chocolate. I just want to let people know. Okay, please go on, please go on. So, and then the recipe um, for the frosting is very unusual for that cake. You make like, um, it's a very old timey recipe that you make a roux out of, well, not a, a traditional roux, but it's flour and yeah, that's the chocolate. It's so cake. beautiful inside. So good. So yeah, you okay. make this roux out of flour and um, milk, and then you add that to the sugar and the butter, and it has the texture of like a Swiss meringue. So when you cool. Finish it, it's yeah, it's really cool. I mean, I think this was one of those thrifty recipes, or you know, like maybe if you didn't have you know confect before confectioner sugar, you didn't have confectioner sugar. Mm -hmm. but actually made with um like regular cane sugar mm -hmm. and butter and then you add this like floury roux and people always think what the heck is this but it comes together beautifully and then of course it has delicious chocolate yeah it looks so good what a cool recipe and like what a great this is like what I love about your recipes and your stories. Like I've never heard of that kind of frosting before. I'm sure some people have, and, but this is new to me and in hearing about it, I'm also like hearing about like resourcefulness and yeah, like, sure. and ingenuity and all of these things yeah, that, that yeah. bakers have, especially. That's my favorite thing about yeah. Southern baking is that exactly that ingenuity. Mm -hmm. I think that these, you know, women were so resourceful and came up mm. with like, how did they think to do a cold oven pound cake? Mm -hmm. You know, that's in the, it's like you put it, you know, you mix it and you, they, you know, they had to stoke a fire, obviously. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. think about that. We just get to turn on our oven. I know. Just, um, yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Amazing. Um, Okay. I mentioned also about like how baking can comfort us. It can help like console us. Like, so let's say, I hope this isn't the case, but I'm going to make this up. Say a good friend of yours has just gone through like a bad breakup. Mm -hmm. Like their heart is broken. They're having yeah. a rough time of it. And you want to bring something over to their house that is just going to, you know, you're not trying to like show off. You just want right. to give them like a hug via something you baked. What are you baking? Well, I have a whole chapter on gathering cake. Mm -hmm. And I think something simple and like a sheet pan or um, there's a lemon buttermilk cake that's really delicious. It's made with a, a buttermilk buttercream frosting. Mm. And just, you know, I think something, like you said, not too showy, but um yeah, something made in like one pan mm -hmm. that, you know, you could sit there and eat it with a fork. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> out of the pan. Right out of the pan. Out of the pan. Um, 
I also feel like baking, it's like one of my favorite ways to say thank you. Like yeah. someone does something nice for you mm-hmm. and you just want to show them a little love or, you know, maybe like the person who delivers your mail, like the yeah. holidays are coming up. Like the woman who delivers our mail, Kim, we love her. She always leaves treats for our dogs. It's so sweet. And wow. I usually, we, you know, we give her like a monetary gift at the end of the year to thank her for all she does for us in a very tangible way. But I also usually try to bake something to attach with that. So like, what should I make for Kim this year as just a thank you? I mean, I think some like muffins are always nice mm-hmm. or quick bread that you can kind of, you know, like in a loaf, nosh on. What do you usually bake, Julia? Not to turn oh it on you, but... Oh no, that's okay. Um, I thought it was fine. What do I usually, I mean, I usually do like a quick bread type of thing. Yeah. Like you're saying mm-hmm. like, like a banana chocolate chip loaf, something yeah. like that. Um, yeah. I love stuff like that. Um, what have I done before? I'm trying to think more, you know, I did, um, I did a recipe for like this applesauce cake and mm-hmm. like cookbooks ago. That's like just really simple. And I make that a lot kind of like as cupcakes or like yeah. in a loaf pan. I feel like a lot. What do you think about this? I feel like most batters can be baked in many different sizes. Oh, absolutely. Shape pans. Yeah. I feel like that's something I don't know that everyone knows permission to do that. <laughs> I love doing that, especially yeah. like muffins to do. I like to do this for the holidays. Does get smaller, like little muffin pans. Mm-hmm. And then you could make that same muffin batter and then maybe make, um, you know, a few loaves Mm -hmm. and then wrap them up and, and then you could easily give that to the male lady. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You could have a few of those rather than just, you know, muffins all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I love doing that. Um, okay. I know that we have to very soon I have to stop asking you questions so we can leave room for other people's questions because um, I know a lot of people have other questions. But before we get to that, I just want to, one more kind of recipe thing. So, okay, my suggestion for everyone is this book is available in a few weeks. This book, I'm just going to show everyone, November 9th. Okay, behind me, these are all cookbooks and these are just some of the cookbooks I own. I have spent my whole life working on cookbooks. I've spent my whole life reading cookbooks. I spent- I have a book of you as a little girl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True story. (laughs) And in a, in like a baking cookbook. Anyway, Mm -hmm. that's the story for another day. So this is to say, I love cookbooks. I know a lot about cookbooks of, of the random things in the world. It's something I know a lot about. And I'm saying all this to say, this is, I'm not just saying this because we're here tonight. This is- one of the best cookbooks I know. This is such, well, yeah. Cheryl, you put so much into this. And I said, I was, you were very kind to ask me. I got to give you like a little blurb. Yes, on the back. yes, yes. And I, I, I stand by what I said. Yeah, I'm going to read it out loud. Why not? I said, I trust Cheryl Day. This applies not only to her recipes, but also to her stories, her character and her style. This treasury comes from a woman who is herself a treasure. I, I, I agree with myself, um, but I just, I wanted to share just the first part of that, that I trust you and the recipes in here, they will turn out when you make them. And there are such, this is an amazing collection of recipes. You put so much into it. The photographs are beautiful. The history, the context is so important. Like this and is such, new recipes, not just like yeah. recycled from yeah. No, you're going to want to make you being everyone listening and everyone you're going to tell about this book. I really, you're going to want to make like everything like this book. This book is so good. And this is the book I will be getting Thank for lots, book. <laughs> for lots of loved ones for the holidays. So pre-order your copy, actually pre-order more than one, like not just for yourself, but give one as a gift. And so my last recipe question is when people are wrapping up this book to give to a loved one as a holiday gift as they should do because it's just the best gift. Also, obviously order all your copies from Book Larder, obviously. Um, (laughs) So when they give it, I think it would be very sweet to give it with 
you know, maybe they don't have to bake something, but maybe they're going to put together some ingredients for yeah, a recipe. Yeah. Like what would you, if this was like in a bag or a basket, mm-hmm. what should come with it? Oh, I mean, maybe it depends on the person. My friend Karen, I told you about, she's mm-hmm. actually doing that and she's getting just depending on the level of baker or whatever. I love to put spices. I love mm. like barrel, you know, burlap and barrel mm-hmm. spice. Or so yeah, burlap wonderful. and barrel is great. Mm-hmm. Um, and, or I also love to do um, this year. Yes, everyone I know is getting a book. <laughs> But I found these awesome um, tea towels that have like baking and jam ingredients all over them. And I'm going to wrap it up in that, you know, like maybe a spatula or a whisk. Mm -hmm. or I just think, you know, something that kind of goes along with it. I feel like you could wrap the book in the tea towel. Yeah, exactly. How fun is that? Um, Cheryl... Congratulations. This is a big accomplishment. Oh, I just, thank you, I really, I know what you put into this and I'm so happy. It. This is my first book event. Oh, I didn't realize that. It was here at Book Larder and with you is so I'm, special. I'm just, I'm, I'm really honored. I'm just, I love you and I'm so happy to know you. you. I love you. And I just, we are all going to benefit from having this book. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will hand it over to you. <laughs> yeah. So for oh, audience okay. questions. Yes. Woohoo. I'll yeah. Stop so um, Helen would like to know about your testing process and did you try out recipes with your customers? Absolutely. Yes. They, my customers loved that when it was testing time for the cookbook. It would be, you know, in the middle of the summer and they were getting sweet potato pie or whatever. (laughs) So that was, yeah, I definitely did test recipes out. And then I also had, um, I've had some people bake through my other previous books that I've become friends with. And I would send recipes to them. Uh, One man in particular, he bakes through the book and he takes recipes to his square dancing group every Mm -hmm. week. And so they test the recipes and taste and tell me what they think and report back. Oh, very nice. Pam would like to know, uh, what's your favorite go-to cookbook? What are the cookbooks you like to cook from? Oh, well, if I said Julia's right, but it's true. (laughs) She knows it's true because I actually am not a savory. Uh, Griff, my husband does most of the cooking. So I do lean on uh, Julia's cookbooks for sure to be able to make like um you know soups and um just things that I normally would make she makes it look so easy and I bake out of your books all the time <laughs> I know I, know. I don't do a good job of telling you when I do and I'm gonna work yes, on that you do, actually yes you do yes. but I bake like more than you realize so you just before. post and tell like the New York Times that you love my that's all <laughs> So Connor would like to know kind of along the lines of that favorite recipe question, like what are the things that you make at home? So if we came to your house right now, Cheryl, and we sort of opened your cookie jar or your, or your uh, cake stand, what would we find? Um, I'm going to finish also, if somebody wanted to know what other baking books that I like. Oh yes. Sorry. 20th century cafe baking is one of my favorite. It's so good. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. And I also love uh, mosquito supper club. Yeah. So, like, so um, what are we going to have? Well, if I'm cooking or like savory cooking or baked? Though? Well, baked first and then also savory. Like uh, what does Griff make for you? Was another well, I always too. make tacos in different yeah. versions. Sometimes like shrimp tacos. Sometimes like we do tacos big at our house. We do all kinds of things. Taco party would be my night. But I, my favorite thing that Griff makes, he does these... Um, like vegetable bowls with just, I don't know, he makes up like sauces and grilled vegetables and either with noodles or with rice. And that's one of my favorite things that he makes. Oh, that sounds lovely. Yeah. Um, what, what about your baked things? What do you, what do you bake at home? 
Um, I rarely bake at home. I did a lot during the pandemic and I like to bake cookies a lot at home or cakes. Um, but since it's just our, or pies actually also, I do love making pies. And then I do often make, I will whip up biscuits in the morning sometimes. Mm. So, also French toast. I really love French toast and waffles. I love breakfast. That's yeah. probably my favorite meal. Yeah. Delicious. Breakfast. Well, and I loved how they, um, made that sort of little took your breakfast recipes out of the ba back in the day bakery book and artisan made that little sort of breakfast yeah book. It was like yeah. one of it's been such a pop that's been a very popular like host gift you know for people oh, to get over it's the holidays so and things cute. like that it's such a great book such a great sort of collection of from that book yeah i love those Alexandra would says that she is dreaming of opening her dream bakery and she's so inspired by you and your bakery, Cheryl. So Aww. would you have any advice for a new bakery owner? Ooh, wow. Congratulations. You're a trooper. <laughs> um, let's see advice. I would say probably go, and I've told people this before, go find someone that you can um, go maybe work there and see what it's really like instead of just throwing yourself into it. See if you can try to get like a mentor or something like that, or, you know, just kind of go work somewhere. What do they call that when you like, the, there's a name. Kind of an it. intern or a stage. Yeah, exactly. Or, you know, how they used to do it. Yeah. Internship in the old. Apprenticeship or yeah. Apprenticeship. That's the word yeah. I'm looking for. But really, I mean, just go spend some time in a bakery because you do kind of want to see what it's like, because a lot of times people think it's glamorous. Apparently, I make it look glamorous. I don't know how, but apparently I do. It's hard work. I mean, or the other thing is start waking up and working those hours. If you can't do it, if you can't get to a place start doing it at home and see what it's like to work that, you know, schedule, uh, yeah. and, you know, bake, bake, bake. I love that advice, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me too. Me it's very too. practical. Yeah. So um, I will join Julia's, you know, rave. Maybe I'm being a little, because we sell this book, but I will just say that, <laughs> that I mean, it's I have access really to pretty much all the cookbooks. Oh, tabs. Oh, I know, right? I just while we were while you guys were talking, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't have a kitchen right now, so this is like December. I will get to oh, start baking from it. Okay. But um, but I will say that I have access to like all the books, and I don't bring all of them home. I, this is going. This is like instantly in my collection, and I honestly oh, well, cannot wait you. to start <laughs> baking from it. You, I mean, that please. Makes me happy. It's, it's a really, it's a really, really great book. It's so good. I'm yeah. like a broken record, but it's so good. <laughs> yeah, we will. Uh, yeah. And like I said, it comes out on the ninth, but um, we'll send, we'll, we are allowed to start sort of mailing the weekend before. So everybody will hopefully get them by the ninth. I love that you them. host these events, Laura. And I mean, I just really do want to say, you know, it's so great that you do this, but I, I just hope that people will support you and buy a book. Oh, you know, thank you, Cheryl. You buy my book or Julia's book, but or one of the other books I mentioned are also great because, you know, we have to support our independent um, booksellers and small businesses because they're the heart of our communities. Yeah, no, we I appreciate everyone um, ordering them. And thank you very much, Cheryl. And um, I should also sh say, Cheryl, I meant to drop it in the in the chat, but people can find it. You guys are a bit. <laughs> Y'all are available on Gold Belly, right? We are, and we have an online shop too. I started a, a small batch provisions company named after my mom, Janie Q, and we make jam. Um, so that's why I have all those peaches in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so you can visit us online too, but I'm letting mm -hmm. the booksellers sell our book. We, we're selling other things. Oh, all right. Well, so that would be a great gift too, then, right? Some yeah. jam provisions from, from you and a book, and yeah, and there's your there's your Christmas day right there. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All yeah. right. Indie, Thank you. So indie bookstores, indie bakeries. <laughs> yes. The two of you do it like the best. I'm just in awe. You no, know, I can't wait to be able to come visit. 
you are welcome sure. anytime, anytime. And you always have a place to stay. I say this to authors all the time. This is actually a little, a little place to stay in my backyard. So oh, you can, well, you're welcome to it. Either of you anytime. Okay. Cheryl, <laughs> yeah, did you hear that? I think Cheryl, you and Griff, me and Grace will have a double date. We're going to come to Seattle. <laughs> go. It's going to be great. Let's do it. Wonderful. Cheryl, I'm so happy for you. I'm proud of you and grateful yeah. for you. Thank you both Thank of you, you for your time. Thank you for having us. Oh, I'm, it was Wonderful. my pleasure. Thank you both of you for your time. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And again, congratulations, Cheryl. Oh, I hope you. everyone Love stays. You, so, yeah. I hope everyone staying both. safe and healthy. Thanks for coming on. Everybody. Have a great night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Sleep well, Cheryl. Good night. <laughs>